I am divorcing my wife after finding out that my son is not mine. A few weeks ago, I learned that my wife had an affair six years ago. I found out when her sister, whom I visited to see how her own child's delivery went, confessed that my wife had drunkenly slept with her best friend six years prior. According to her, my wife deeply regretted it. At the time she told me I was with my son and immediately after leaving her house I went to take a paternity test with him, fearing the worst. A week later I get the results and my fears came true, my son is not mine, for some reason, I began to see the boy differently, more as an acquaintance than a son, with proof in hand, I confronted my wife at night when the child was sleeping, she asked me who told me and I simply told her that it is none of her business, although obviously it will not take long to connect the dots that it was her sister. Well, that is not my problem now. Regardless of that, I asked her for a divorce, which is now in process, she was devastated, she swore to me more than once that nothing happened with anyone again, that she has been faithful to me in body and soul since then. I held back the urge to insult her to avoid complications during the divorce issue, not believing a word she said, mostly blaming the alcohol instead of taking the blame herself. After talking about it, she threatened me saying that she would demand full custody of the child, I was so annoyed at that moment that I told her okay, I don't want anything to do with something that is not mine, that she keep the child and I'll keep the dogs, we have two dogs that we adopted as puppies and they are currently 8 years old each. After my words, she tried to convince me to take care of the child with her, that I am his father, at that moment I exploded, I was so angry and I had held back so much the urge to scream, that I just yelled at her to go and take her bastard with her. A week has passed since that and I am at home, it is in my name because it is a gift from my parents, she went to her parents house with her kid, she has not called me since then, she left with everything and the half asleep kid when I yelled at her, especially since it was the first time I really yelled at her, it sure affected her. I talked to my parents and my dad told me that I did the right thing and that I shouldn't be raising something that is not of my blood, and I agree with him, however, the pain is still there, my younger brother told me to write here to entertain myself. I am currently seeing a therapist three times a week, who told me that I have already taken the first step, which was to leave behind what causes me pain, it just hurts to know that my family no longer exists. Regarding why my sister-in-law told me everything, according to her, she felt guilty seeing me always happy with my son, knowing that he may not be mine, and that the fact that we went to visit her in a moment of weakness caused her to completely break down with guilt. I don't know how true that is. I just know that right now I feel tremendous hatred for my wife, and a feeling between pain and resentment for the child, although it's just time to get ahead. I just hope the divorce goes smoothly, we have separate financiers and properties and if she really asks for child support I have proof that it's not mine, according to my lawyer that's more than enough, if she tries a legal process for that. My therapist also recommended that I not see him nor her, that regardless of the child's feelings, I should focus on my own first, that the child is no longer my problem and the sooner I accept it, the better. Becoming TikTok famous ruined my life. When I was 15 years old I started posting on TikTok, I never had a true goal with my content and really didn't care or think about what kind of videos I was putting out, and I think that's what made so many people like me. I gained nearly 3 million followers in just over a year. I would just post videos of me talking, making jokes, dyeing my hair weird colors, playing games, etc. No actual substantial content. Two years ago, I deleted my entire TikTok account. I think this was a beginning to my deep-rooted despise for my online presence. When I deleted my account, it was because I had begun to realize how horribly unnatural it is to have such a platform, and be bombarded by so many opinions, be perceived by so so many people, for me, it never really was the hate but rather the discomfort that comes with such a huge audience, because the truth is, I wasn't trying to get famous, I didn't want to be an influencer, I didn't want to be in the public eye, and once I realized that, I deleted everything. The issue is now I am tormented by my past, though I had deleted all my content over two years ago, there are literally hundreds of my fans who have mega files of everything I've ever published to the internet, and they have so 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 many amounts where they just repost everything I have deleted, including my private account posts, stories, etc. These people will go to the lengths of compiling all my private information including my family names, houses I've lived in, schools I've gone to, and every single product I use or clothing I wear, it's all posted to the internet. I have made a post on my public Instagram multiple times, nearly begging people to stop reposting all my old content from when I was 15 years old, posting images of me as a child, and harassing my family and friends. On top of that there is also groups of grown men who also compile my videos and images, and have created deep fake videos of me, using my face from when I was 15 years old. Most recently, I found one of these group chats, I know I shouldn't be searching for these, this was the first time I noticed one in months, and there were people from my hometown, and a man who lived in my neighborhood who were joking about essaying me. I feel trapped, it gives me overwhelming dread when I search my own name online and it's all this old version of me, pictures of my face and body that I can never get off the internet, all the articles about my personal information contain a romantic link to my abusive ex-boyfriend. I feel like my internet presence has been predetermined for me and I can never choose a new path without being haunted by what it used to be. To be clear, I do pride myself on the fact that I have never done anything inherently bad on the internet, and nothing very controversial, but I am just so different than I was then and I want to get away from it, it's so much harder than it seems. I have no friends, I feel like people don't approach me because they search up my name and I seem like some stupid famous TikToker, I have genuinely thought about changing my name, but I really, really, 
value my individuality and I feel like who I am has been destroyed by the internet, who I want to be now is so very different from the girl who comes up when someone searches my name, it's humiliating in the greatest sense. I'm genuinely considering trying to find someone I could hire to wipe my identity and images of me off the face of the internet but I know that's literally impossible, I also considered a legal name change but that sent me into a spiral because I'm very connected to my name and identity, and I don't want that to be ripped from me as well, I wish I had been using an alias this whole time. Honestly, there is a good amount of people who have forgotten or don't know about my past identity on the internet, but it's just the idea that whoever I meet will at some point need to know or figure out about this part of me if they google my name, they will just see everything I have ever published to the internet. It feels indescribable, it's a feeling and situation, so absolutely impossible to explain to someone who hasn't been in my exact position, which is why I find it so hard to vent to anyone I know, so I will post here. I am crazy about this guy I've been seeing, but he told me he was convicted for murder. I, 28 female. Met this guy, 31 male, on a dating app a little over a month ago. He had interesting hobbies, specifically stated he wasn't looking for hookups and he was handsome in that brooding kind of way. We talked and hit it off really well, he was funny and polite and showed interest in what I had to say and even did some research on some of the things I said about a hobby he knew nothing about. Not in a pushy way, he just wanted to understand better, there was very little flirting and it seemed like he was serious about taking it slow. I was too, and everything was going great so eventually we met up for coffee. Coffee date goes really well. Like, really well. He looks exactly like on his profile, which admittedly I've been wary about, and he's funny and charming and smart and doesn't take himself too seriously and he was engaged with what I said too. You know that thing where you're interested in what someone has to say, and then you have a question? But then you don't ask that question because you're interested and you've been listening and you work out the answer for yourself, but then you have another question that you can't work out and you ask that question instead. He was doing that and it just made me feel. I don't know. Just heard? My past relationships were different and I got brushed off a lot because I can get excited and really into something and I ramble on. They told me that was weird and told me to stop. Then I felt bad about myself for doing so, but this guy didn't do that at all. He was into it and asked questions. Anyway, it was a great date. Afterwards we went for a walk because neither of us wanted the date to end, I think, and we walked by a canal where a bird like a duck and its little chicks were swimming about. It wasn't a duck but I don't know what the English word is. He pointed them out and pretty much melted at how cute they were. It was adorable to see his reaction. So all that to say he seemed like a really kind and cool person and someone I already felt I was falling for. By the end of the date, he asked whether he could kiss me. I said yes and he did. Just a light kiss. We continued to text and occasionally call afterwards and had a second date a week later. It was at a restaurant that he had suggested. I texted I wasn't sure what to wear and he said I should wear whatever I felt most comfortable in, it wasn't a fancy restaurant, but then also add the silliest thing I had. I said, what about you? He replied, yes what about me? And I told him I'd do it if he also did it. He agreed. We met up at the restaurant and I wore a dress with a print on it that made it look like an apple core. He showed up with a button-down shirt and a blazer. And giant purple carnival glasses. Whatever they're called. He refused to take them off the entire night because I couldn't take my dress off either so that wouldn't be fair. This date went great too. I won't bore you with more details, but I think it's important to really show how he acted and how nice he was and stuff. We kept texting and calling afterwards. For our third date, we went to a local foods event where lots of wagons and vans were lined up in the street and gave our free samples of food and drinks. We went for a walk and sat down on a bench and he said he had something important to tell me, namely that he had been in prison for six years for taking the lives of two people. This obviously came as a shock to me because nothing in his behavior had led me to believe something like that was possible. He said several times he had been, convicted of taking those lives, but never said whether he actually did them or not. He was specifically not saying he was innocent either though. He just said it was something he had been convicted for and had been in prison for. It was something from his past and that's where he wanted it to stay. He would not give any details about it, not then and not at any later point, and he had never told anyone else more details either and never would. I could look up news articles and stuff if I wanted to. He didn't care about that. I asked why he only told me now because that's information I'd like to know ASAP. He said, if I put, took the lives of two people on my dating profile, would you have swiped right? And, no, I definitely would not have. He said he didn't want the first impression of him to be that he had been convicted. Nobody would give him a chance, but he understood too that it's not something he could keep a secret because it wouldn't be fair to others. That's why he had waited until the third date, I'd gotten to know him a little and wasn't in too deep yet. Now I could make a good choice. If I wanted nothing to do with him anymore, he would understand. He didn't put any pressure on me and appeared genuine about what he was saying. I still felt really uncomfortable about what I'd learned. I tried not to show it, but clearly I didn't do a good job of it. I asked a few questions about his past and he answered some of them, but nothing about the lives he took. He wasn't evasive, but just said that he wouldn't answer like he had said earlier. It's not like he got irritated or anything though. I think he was trying to make an effort to be open with me, but I don't know. 
We eventually said goodbye and it was a bit awkward. He said if I didn't want anything to do with him anymore, he'd understand. I replied I needed time to think about it and he said of course. I still texted him when I got home safe, because he asked, which I guess is a bit ironic. I looked up his name and I found some old news articles that he'd been convicted for taking two lives and sent to prison. It was longer than six years, but I guess he got out earlier. I couldn't find anything about that. They were apparently related to gangs but that's all I got, by the way I am not in the US. It's been a few days now and he hasn't contacted me. He said he'd wait for me to message him first to give me all the space and time I needed, I'm not planning on ghosting him, but I don't know what to do. Obviously he really was in prison for taking the two lifts because the news articles are there. He said that's in the past, but is that really true? And can I trust someone who has done this, if he's actually done this, but with all this evidence and his attitude about it, I believe he probably did? On the other hand, if he didn't do it, I don't know. He's really been so nice and kind to me. Like a perfect guy to me. And I guess he's right that there's more to him than just his conviction, and maybe I shouldn't let that make my decision. I really really liked him. Like head over heels. I still do, but now I wonder if that's really him? I don't know what to do. Is it worth the risk? Are there any other questions I could ask him? Is there even a way to make myself calmer with this? I really don't want to stop seeing him, but I also feel anxious of course. Is it best to just leave him alone? Help.